Hi, my name is Daryl Koltoff. I've been teaching in the San Francisco Bay Area for about 20 years now. I have also had experience as an air cargo pilot and an airline pilot. My website, BayAreaFlyingLessons.com, has more information about flying. I'm going to give an introduction to airspace and charts. I'll go over airspace classes A through G, special use airspace, temporary flight restrictions, and chart reading techniques in general. To get the best video clarity, I recommend that you run at the highest resolution that your computer and internet connection will allow. Uh, BayAreaFlyingLessons.com This uh, student resources tab has a few files that can be downloaded uh, without uh, passwords. So you go to the student resources tab and scroll down until you see uh, general training aids and then you can click on airspace requirements and you'll be able to uh, follow along on paper as well. Then I'm going to take you to uh, that file and I want to uh, mention that your aeronautical charts while current for six months uh, have uh, a requirement that you have a current airport facility directory after the first 56 days in order for you to have uh, corrections and modifications to the chart. And those are found in the chart bulletin section of the airport facility directory. And then it's good to have uh, an overview of airspace as to why it exists in the first place. Uh, different classes of airspace exist to give uh, pilots better separation from each other. Um, the IFR traffic has to be separated from other IFR aircraft by the air traffic controllers and that's true in any type of airspace and the um, class A airspace does not allow VFR pilots to fly at all. Class A airspace starts at uh, 18,000 feet and above up to 60,000 feet. Um, if an IFR pilot comes out of the clouds in other types of airspace like Bravo or Charlie or Delta or Echo or Golf, then both pilots, the VFR pilot and the IFR pilot, need time to be able to look for each other and avoid each other. An IFR pilot and a VFR pilot or two VFR pilots are both responsible to see and avoid each other if they're in VFR conditions or visual flight rules conditions. And some of the other things that you'll need to know about airspace, um, above 10,000 feet, the speed limit is basically the speed of sound or as fast as your airplane can go. And below 10,000 feet, aircraft are limited to 250 knots indicated airspeed. So the visibility and cloud clearance requirements will be higher uh, at those higher altitudes. So as I mentioned, um, Class A airspace exists from 18,000 to 60,000 feet. Only IFR aircraft are permitted in Class A airspace. And air traffic control is responsible for their horizontal and vertical separation. Um, then I'm going to go through the various airspace classes. So this is a... Uh, a view of the San Francisco terminal area chart on uh, a website called skyvector.com. You can use this to view different uh, types of charts and you can even uh, put in a uh, flight plan and take a look at your flight plan on a chart in different routes before you actually draw it out on paper. The uh, San Francisco class Bravo airspace is depicted by th uh, thick blue lines and you can see concentric circles going out to as far as uh, 30 nautical miles. The uh, standard spacing on these uh, circles is 5 nautical mile increments. Sometimes you have a non-standard segment. Here is one that's uh, 7. And the uh, airspace is shaped kind of like an upside down wedding cake. And the uh, altitudes are depicted in hundreds of feet and the lower number shows the lower altitude and the upper number shows the upper altitude. In this case, uh, the central part of the class Bravo airspace, the lower altitude is all the way down to the surface, SFC, and the upper limit of the class Bravo is uh, 10,000 feet. In other segments, like over here, uh, the lower altitude is 4,000 and the upper limit is 10,000. 
And a lot of the terminal area charts will have uh, specific uh, dimensions on the chart. Like, for example, this one shows you that you're um, 30 nautical miles away from San Francisco if you, ha if you were to tune in at uh, DME or a GPS to the location of the San Francisco VOR, you could accurately see your distance away. And then our next class of airspace is Class Charlie. The thick magenta lines that you see here are outlining the lateral limits of Class Charlie. This particular one is for part of uh, Oakland. Oakland has a surface area here and then an outer shelf area here. And Oakland's kind of unusual. The typical Class Charlie airspace uh, vertical limits are red just like the Class Bravo vertical limits. Here for the uh, little northwest corner of San Jose, you can see a 15 for uh, the lower limit of 1,500 feet MSL, and the upper altitude for San Jose's Class Charlie is 4,000 MSL. For Oakland's uh, central core, the lower limit is the surface and the upper limit of the Charlie says T. And if you look over here on the ocean, you'll be able to see um, and decode what that T actually means, but it means that the top of the Charlie airspace actually runs into the bottom of the Bravo airspace that lies above it. So for this little section here, the uh, Charlie airspace would go from the surface up to 2,100 and then I have the little uh, upper limit blocked but you can see the lower limit of another Bravo ring here uh, that is uh, 3,000 so in this case the Charlie airspace would go from surface to 3,000. These uh, The class Bravo airspaces used to be called terminal control areas so I believe this T is a remnant of the time when you'd say that the uh, class Charlie airspace went from the surface up to the bottom of the TCA or terminal control area. The uh, next airspace uh, on down is class Delta and um, class Delta airspace we can take a look at San Carlos has a dashed blue line around it and that indicates it's a uh, class delta airspace. The class delta airspace will always start at the surface and the upper limit is depicted by a box with an altitude inside and hundreds of feet MSL. So on this side of uh, Highway 101, San Carlos has uh, 20, so the upper limit is 2,000 feet MSL. On the other side they have a 15 with a minus and that means that uh, the airspace upper limit would be 1499 feet MSL. And then I'm going to go to, uh, oh and just as a quick review, so Class Bravo uh, airspace uh, is surrounds the largest airports in the country like San Francisco and San Diego and Los Angeles and New York and then Class Charlie airspace will surround uh, mid-size airports like Oakland and San Jose and Class Delta airspace uh, surrounds the smallest tower airports. Okay, now to get into uh, Echo and Golf airspace, I'm going to switch over to another view of uh, the San Francisco chart, but this will be the San Francisco uh, sectional chart. And this is a view of the chart around South Lake Tahoe. So you can see. Uh, Lake Tahoe here, and I'm going to use five different airports in this area to show the different floors of Class Echo. Uh, Class Echo airspace will come down from 18,000 feet, or technically 17,999, to some floor altitude, and then if that floor altitude is not the surface, there'll be Class Golf airspace underneath. So if you can find the floor of the Echo, you'll know where the Golf airspace is as well. And there are five different possibilities when they're uh, depicting floors of echo. One of them is if you're on the uh, hard side of blue shading, and you don't see much blue shading on the chart. Uh, you have to go into a, typically a mountainous region to see this blue shading, and there uh, is no uh, blue shading on the charts like this uh, to the east of the Mississippi River anyway. So most of the time you're dealing with less populated areas in the Mountain West where you can even find some of this uh, blue shading. 
but on the uh, hard side of the blue, or the non-diffused side, then you see this uh, Rosachi, or yeah, Rosachi, Rose uh, Sasi Airport. It's hard to pronounce for me. And um, in this area, there I would say is no blue shading, and the Class Echo airspace uh, would come down to a floor of 14,500 feet MSL. Underneath that Class Echo airspace, down to the surface, uh, you have Class G airspace. And then over on uh, the other side of this line, I'll have to move the uh, chart up a little bit. There we go. Over in this area by uh, Alpine County Airport, you can see there's blue shading here, and it diffuses, so you consider all of these areas to be blue shading. So really, since most of the chart is like that, you really just are looking for where the blue shading stops. Uh, but if you look at uh, Alpine County Airport, it's what I would consider blue shaded, but surrounded by a zipper symbol. And they've uh, listed the floor of the Class Echo airspace uh, right on the chart. They printed 12,300 feet MSL and in this case that altitude is the floor of the Class Echo airspace so below that altitude down to the surface you'd have Class Golf airspace. And then our next airport with a uh, floor altitude for the Class Echo of 1200 feet AGL above ground level. AGL is rare uh, for airspace so that is uh, Dayton Valley Airport, and in this area, you see you're not in the magenta shaded areas, and you're not where the blue shading stops, but you're in between. So Dayton Valley has a um, class echo floor of 1,200 feet AGL, and below that altitude down to the surface is class golf airspace. And then the uh, fourth way to depict the floor of class echo is if uh, they shade the chart magenta, then the floor of the Class Echo is 700 feet AGL, and that's the case for uh, Minden Tahoe Airport. And then lastly, uh, you can look at South Lake Tahoe Airport, and it is shaded magenta, but it also has magenta dashed lines surrounding uh, South Lake Tahoe Airport, and that designates Class Echo airspace all the way down to the surface. So in this location you'd have class echo from 18,000 feet all the way down to the surface and you'd, you could say there's no class G airspace in this area. Then I'm going to take us to uh, a table that summarizes the visibility and cloud clearance requirements. Alright, if you look at uh, FAR 91-155, you'll see there are uh, many different types of airspace and uh, they break it into uh, class golf in the daytime, class golf in the nighttime, class echo in the daytime, class echo in the nighttime, um, class golf below 1200 feet, um, class golf between 1200 feet AGL and 10,000 feet MSL, and it's, it gets very convoluted. Um, you can actually uh, boil down these different visibility and cloud clearance requirements to uh, a minimum of five. And that's what I'm going to present here. First of all, if you are above 10,000 feet MSL, it doesn't matter what type of airspace that you're in, whether you're in echo or golf airspace, um, if you're above 10,000 feet, aircraft can go faster, they can go up to uh, 600 knots or so, as fast as the aircraft can go, but they can go faster than 250 knots, um, which they're limited to below 10,000 feet. You've reached the end of part uh, one in my six-part series on airspace and charts. To view the remaining 65 minutes of the uh, video, please go to my website, bayareaflyinglessons.com, and scroll down and choose the uh, training videos tab.